So today we're making a Moscow Mule and uh, it's gonna be kind of a long video because it's got a lot of history behind it. So those of you who really like the history are gonna dig this episode. Those of you who don't like the history, maybe not so much, but if I've taken pity on you, then below there is a timestamp. I just don't know if I'm going to take pity on you, I may. And don't worry if you didn't do it, somebody else is gonna do it. So just scroll down, find that guy that always puts like, cocktail starts at eh. There's always that like annoyed person that like puts a timestamp in the comments, always. So maybe you could just go into the comments and hit the timestamp. Uh, the Moscow Mule traces its lineage back to the 1890s to another drink called a buck, which actually was a Prohibition era favorite, even though it uh, has a lot more history than that. Uh, so a buck was basically just spirit, lime, ice, and ginger beer in a tall glass. And uh, in the 18, I wanted to say 1850s, but I actually don't know if it's the 1850s. We'll just say mid 1800s in England, ginger beer uh, uh, emerged as a digestive aid. Um, and it's also said that the first buck that was ever created probably was the Dark and Stormy uh, because uh, British naval officers that were stationed in Bermuda got their hands on some goslings, a little bit of lime and some ginger beer and made the drink for the first time. Uh, but the modern mule uh, um, was created in 1941 at a bar called the Cock and Bull Tavern, which was owned by a guy named Jack Morgan. And the story goes, it's a pretty interesting story, I think, that Jack Morgan was sitting around with a drink executive from a company called Hublin named John G. Margin, Martin, and another guy, I almost said John G. Margin, but it's John G. Martin, and another guy named Rudolf Kunet, who was the president of the vodka division at Hublin. Hublin was a company that was, uh, emer uh, that was established in 1862, and it was, and it specialized in not only distributing spirits, but also in bottled cocktails. They were actually uh, responsible for a bottled cocktail making the rounds in the nightclub circuit in New York in the 1970s and 80s called A Brass Monkey, which was immortalized in the uh, first Beastie Boys album. I believe it was the first, Licensed to Ill, I believe. Yes, it was, it was Licensed to Ill for sure. Um, anyway, so the story is that uh, Jack Morgan, John G. Martin and Rudolph Kunet are all sitting around at Jack's bar and they're trying to figure out how to help Jack um, use these copper mugs that his girlfriend who worked at a copper company gave him that he couldn't do anything with and how to sell a bunch of ginger beer that nobody wanted. Um, Rudolph Kunet at the same time was trying to figure out how to get people to drink vodka because at the time Hublin was representing Smirnoff and Smirnoff was trying to unseat gin as the clear spirit of choice in America and at the time, nobody actually wanted to drink vodka. It was an obscure spirit and nobody really saw the point in it. Everybody wanted gin. Uh, so they're all sitting around brainstorming and then one person said, let's just add some, uh, let's at, at the time it was actually, let's add some lemon juice instead of lime, just add some lemon juice and some vodka and some ginger beer together in this copper mug and we'll call it a Moscow mule. Now, there has been some information that I think is pretty, uh, probably pretty accurate that says that Wes Price, who was the head bartender at the Cock and Bull at the time, was the one that was actually responsible for putting all the drinks together. But nonetheless, whoever created it, history was made in that, uh, in that, in that day. So this is what we're gonna do. Today I didn't actually pre-juice any lime because we don't, we're not doing a lot of lime cocktails and I don't wanna waste anything. So I'm actually gonna use a citrus press today. And we are going to Press some lime. This lime has like no juice in it. Wait, that actually, that lime has seen better days, Marius. So, you know what? Let's choose another lime, I think. Here we go. This one should be all right, right? Yeah, it's better. All right, I'm gonna get a lot more juice out of this one. So we're gonna do three quarters of an ounce of lime juice. So it's like one small line, basically. Cool, exactly three quarters of an ounce, very nice. If you have larger limes, you might not need to use the entire thing. So three quarters of an ounce of lime juice. And then we're just adding two ounces of vodka. And then we're just going to Add in our ice. 
You can give it a little stir if you want. I actually don't give it a little stir because it really doesn't need it. I just uh, make sure to pour my ginger beer not right on top of the ice so it doesn't just like layer on and just kind of mixes really well. And so you just add your ginger beer in. Uh, I like to cut a little wheel for it. Get this thing out of the way. I'm gonna notch it here and then just like put it here. Or I'll put it here, I guess. Um, and let's take a sip. That is good. Very simple, but very, very good. Very refreshing, very nice for a hot day. And since we're pretty much in summer now, uh, or, you know, it's not the official day of summer, which is what, the 23rd of June? I don't know, but it's well, hot today, for summer. It is, oh my God, it is brutally hot in LA. And I'm sure it's pretty hot where you guys are at now too, unless you're below the equator. It's very, very nice, very cold. Uh, basically, not much to say about the flavor profile. You get that nice lime and it's very tart. But what's cool is that the ginger beer really just offsets the lime tartness with just enough sugar. I like to use Fever Tree for my ginger beer. You can use any ginger beer you want. You can use Reed's or Bundaberg or whatever. I like uh, the uh, Fever Tree because it's very gingery and it's not very sugary. So it's not super, super sweet. Uh, and you get that nice like tart lime offset by a tiny bit of sugar, a nice amount of ginger. Uh, and then of course, you know, obviously the vodka is just alcoholizing the other flavors. So you're getting just like, I mean, because of the amount of ginger beer and lime in here, you're not even really getting that much ethanol burn or anything. It's just, you know, it's just alcohol. It's just alcohol. It's just alcoholic ginger beer with lime in it. And it's great. This is like one of the most popular and approachable summer cocktails. And also um, it is one of the most satisfying. So there it is, guys, the Moscow Mule.